when darkness falls and the storm clouds gather. When the fiery trials threaten to leave nothing but ashes, the real question in life is not why do the righteous suffer, but how should the righteous suffer? Well, we're in round two of Job's discussions with his comforters. Last time we looked at uh, Eliphaz's second attack, and now we're going to look at Bildad's second attack and Job's response. We're gonna, only going to look at two chapters, so we're just going to read a little, talk a little as we make our way through it. So, chapter 18 Verse 1, then answered Bildad the Shuhite and said, How long will it be ere ye make an end of words? Mark, and afterwards we will speak. Shut up and listen to what we have to say to you. I mean, yep. <laughs> Basically. It's kind of bold. Yeah, it is. It's <clears throat> just... We don't want to hear what you have to say. What you need to do is right. just listen. Shut your mouth, and we'll we'll set you straight if you'll let us. Um, we're, we're way past comfort. Oh yeah. <laughs> I mean, comfort went out the window a, a while back. And and respect and and I, I just keep in in these words. I see a deep, like an underlying um, animosity toward Job. Uh, and the, God talked about his righteousness. God talked about his, um, I believe it talks about his wealth. And, and, mm -hmm. and I, I, I just have a feeling these guys envy them. I it's agree. Like you just see that. I don't think it's an underlying <clears throat> animosity. Anymore. Yeah, well, now it's not. <laughs> this is blatant. But what I'm talking about is pre, you know, this, this in, you know, experience. Yeah. There's mm -hmm. probably some envy. There's probably some deep-seated animosity, mm -hmm. probably because of, you know, it's just the flesh. He's got what we want. I agree. That's what I see. Yeah, and verse 3 says, Wherefore are we counted as beasts and reputed vile in your sight? It's, it's interesting that Bildad is going to take, <coughs> take the victim role right here. Mm -hmm. Yep, exactly. Mm -hmm. I mean... Job's outnumbered. He's been through all this devastation. And he's been insulted and falsely accused over and over again. And they're like, I can't believe you're going to act like we're monsters attacking you. When Job and, never pointed fingers at them or said, all he just said is, you guys are miserable comforters. But mm -hmm. he didn't say they were beasts. He yeah. didn't point at their life. He's just trying to figure his situation out. Right. Yeah, the thing that I see that, that just comes up over and over again, and I was thinking about this as I, I read this, um, and was listening to someone teach on it, feelings. And I, he mentioned that, you know, when, when we're looking at Job, we need to remember that we're looking at poetry. Mm -hmm. And poetry is about feelings. The whole purpose of it is to is to convey feelings. And, and we gotta be careful that we don't get too bogged down and, and try to figure things out too deeply because what we're reading is individuals expressing emotion in grave detail, mm -hmm. you know. Um, and there's no lack of feelings in this group. I mean, obviously Job has his feelings. <clears throat> But it's, it's interesting, Job shares what he's feeling, and from that point on, these guys pile on. Job doesn't receive it, and now they've got their feelings hurt. Yeah, they thought they were coming with all the answers. How dare he not listen to us? I've gotten my feelings hurt before trying to help somebody. Why? Yeah, that's a good question. We all have, right? But, but why? Why would... 
<clears throat> so obviously this person has an issue or a problem or a potential problem. Mm -hmm. I'm coming along. I'm going to try to help if I can. I share whatever it is that I share. They don't receive it. They don't like it. They throw it in file 13, whatever, or they lash back. Mm -hmm. Now I got my, why do I got my, why do I have my feelings hurt? Why don't I just say, you know what? I shared it. There it is. I'm going about my business. It's like it, what Christ said when you go into towns and share the gospel. They're not willing to receive it. Shake the shake dust off. Shake it off. Just shake it off and keep going. I, I've mm -hmm. done my part. <clears throat> mm -hmm. it, it feels like these guys have made up. They're, they're not going to stop until, until Job cries uncle. Yeah. They're just going to badger, badger, badger. <clears throat> well, it's because they're not there to help. They're there to get some type of gratification, grat <laughs> the word gratification right. of their own by, and like we go all the way back to the theology, they want, so, they want a, um, an approval or a verification that their theology is correct. Mm -hmm. And the only thing that's going to do that is if Job says, you guys are right. Mm -hmm. Yep, that's what they're This is because for. of my sin. <clears throat> I need to repent and everything will be back the way that it's supposed and to be. And at this point, they're not wanting him to repent to God. They're wanting him to repent to, to them. To them. Right. Yeah. <laughs> right. And until he does, then they're not going to be justified, right? And that's what they, they really want, like you said. They want to be justified in their own experiences and outcomes in their own life, things that they've had, and they say, well, this, this is because I've done something wrong. Well, Job hasn't done that. And what we're stumbling on is another shade of religion. Yeah, well, you know, and, and I can remember going to people, whether they're sick in the hospital or dealing with something terrible, and even being apprehensive about it myself because there's, there's the human side of me that's going, I, 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 w I would hate to think this was happening to me. And, and I don't really know how to process, process it myself because it's terrifying. I mean, you're, you're looking at the situation going, this is, this is awful, and I don't even know. So I'm sure there's part of that going on with these guys because of their theology. They're like, if we can't get him to confess, we don't really know what to do. Yeah, they need some this. type of assurance that they're not gonna find themselves in this place that squares with their reality. Uh, and and I'm wondering theology. in the back of their head if there's not that fear. Mm -hmm. You know, like when you go into the hospital to, to visit somebody and you walk up to the door and they're like, you know, be sure to put on protecting. And you're going, what do they got? I, 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 <laughs> you know, so, and so, how do I not get right, it? So, they're, so they've got this. I wonder if in the back of their mind they're thinking, if we can't convince Job that we're right, and if by small chance we're wrong, then he's a constant reminder that this could happen to any one of us at any moment. And the thought of that is The brain just can't take that. Can't yeah. take it. Yeah, this is Job's condition, his situation is a test of their theology. Yes. And it's about to break. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so now in verse 4, he turns around and says, this is all your fault. <clears throat> he teareth himself in his anger. We're not, we're not attacking you. We're not monsters. We're not beasts, verse 3. You're the one tearing yourself apart, he says, because of your anger. Shall the earth fors be forsaken for thee, and shall the rock be removed out of his place? It's, almost, it's like Bildad saying, because remember, he's the traditionalist. He's the mm -hmm. one that was talking about the past, the mm -hmm. past. He's like, dude, there are unchangeable laws, and they're not going to change for you. This is cause and effect, bro. Deal with it. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly right. Yeah. And then he spends the rest of the chapter describing what happens to wicked people. Mm-hmm obviously implying that Job is one of them. He says, Yea, the light of the wicked shall be put out, and the spark of his fire shall not shine. The light shall be dark in his tabernacle, and his candle shall be put out with him. The steps of his strength shall be straightened, and his own counsel shall cast him down. For he is cast into a net by his own feet, and he walketh upon a snare. The jinn shall take him by the heel, and a robber shall prevail against him. The snare is laid for him in the ground, and a trap for him in the way. <clears throat> he uses six 
different synonyms to describe being trapped. He, he's like, mm -hmm. if you're wicked, it's going to get you. Mm -hmm. And obviously that's what's happened. Wow. <laughs> <clears throat> mm -hmm. And now he's using something that Job said in chapter 16. He says, terror shall make him afraid on every side and shall drive him to his feet. <clears throat> his strength shall be uh, hunger bitten and destruction shall be ready at his side. It shall devour the strength of his skin. Even the firstborn of death shall devour his strength. So here's Job sitting there with boils from head to toe. Having lost his children. Right, and, and, and they're just pointing out all of these things. His confidence shall be rooted out of his tabernacle, and it shall bring him to the king of terrors. It shall dwell in his tabernacle because it is none of his. Brimstone shall be scattered upon his habitation. His roots shall be dried up beneath, and above shall his branch be cut off. His remembrance shall perish from the earth, and he shall have no name in the street. He shall be driven from light into darkness and chased out of the world. He shall neither have son nor nephew among his people, nor any remaining in his dwellings. They that come after him shall be astonished at his day, as they that went before were affrighted. Surely such are the dwellings of the wicked, and this is the place of him that knoweth not God. Yeah. Job, you wicked man, it's because you, you don't, you don't, don't know, know God. You don't even know God. <clears throat> yeah. You don't even know God. Wow. When God himself at the beginning of the book says, hey, have you considered my servant Job? There's none like him. He fears God. He eschews evil. But again, these guys aren't privy to that. So they're looking much like most of the world even today is at a situation and saying, what's the cause? We don't know what it is. Well, let's make up one, right? So we don't know what it really is. Time for fake news. Time for our own uh, narrative, right. if you will, and uh, something we can get behind. And this, this is a place where Job's saying, I'm in a bad spot, and man, I just wish I had some good friends. Because these guys, yeah. they're the worst. <laughs> they're the worst. Well, and, and it's that theology, that ideology, that good things happen to good people, bad things happen to bad people. It's just, it's, and I, you said it um, a, a time or two before about, and maybe it was a different discussion about how it's easier to rely on that hmm. uh, that premise that if you're bad, bad things are going to happen to you. If you're good, good things are going to happen to you. Then it is to trust that the wind blows where it wills. Yeah. No one, where it will. No one right. knows from where it comes or where it goes. So is everyone that's born of the Spirit. That you have to be constantly surrendered, and you have to be constantly waiting and and listening and. And, uh, but the other way, it's just, it's just easy. You go about your life. Mm -hmm. If good things are happening to you, you're good. If bad things are happening to you, you're bad. Um, but that theology doesn't hold water. And there's, there, there, there is an element of truth to that. When you read through the scripture, you know, you reap what you sow. I mean, there, there is an element to consequences mm -hmm. of what we do. But when it's taken to the extreme, like we're dealing yeah. with here, the problem with, with it is when it's taken to that extreme, man is in control. That's, mm -hmm. that's it. That's, that's what I was trying to say. It's man in control. Because if I do this, this, and this, mm -hmm. then I'm guaranteed to get this answer in the equation. But when there's, there's the, it's, this doesn't equal, and that's what they're dealing with and right now. And that's when people's brains short out. And I think that's why you see a lot of people walk away from faith because it didn't square up with... This is a good point on both. So, so we see this on both sides of the equation. Mm -hmm. So like you just said, there are people who come into the church mm -hmm. or come into the faith, so to speak. They, they, tr they, they attempt to serve the Lord. They hear this type of theology mm -hmm. at whatever level it is. And then life takes a crazy turn and they think God failed them. Mm -hmm. Well, this didn't work. 
preacher said, if I do this, this, and this, if I show up to church, if I pay my tithes, if I do whatever, this is not going to happen. My kid's not going to be like this. I'm, this is not going to happen. I'm not going to lose my job. I'm not going to get sick, blah, 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 blah. And that, so they walk away. And then you have the believer that doesn't walk away, but they fake it. Hmm. They walk into the church and they'll never share with another brother or sister what they're going through because they're afraid of being in Job's situation. Mm -hmm. If they're really struggling with something or life has taken a crazy turn. <laughs> afraid of being in Job's situation with his friends. Yes, mm -hmm. absolutely. They're, they're going to be ostracized and, by the people that, in the that church. Does happen. It and will so happen. you have right. the whole, yes, bless God, bless yeah. God. I'm so I'm good. so blessed. I'm too blessed to be yeah. stressed. You know, and, they, and so they walk in, and instead of the church being a hospital like Christ intended it, where we can be open and honest, confess your faults one to another, pray one for another that you may be healed, there's a bunch of hip hypocrisy in the church, and a lot of it is because of this type of thinking. Of you know, you, you have parents who did everything they were supposed to do, and their child still walked away from the Lord and is living out in the world. And it's easy for someone to look at them and go, oh, well, train up a child the way she go. When he's old, he won't depart. And, and just smack them upside the head with the scripture. Um, it happens all the time. It does. You're right. Oh, if you're, you, right. you're still sick. You know, God didn't heal granny because you guys didn't have enough faith. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, that's the kind of it's stuff. A big, that's, a big mentality. It really is. It's crazy how, how after so many hundreds of years, and we have what those, none of these four guys have. Right. We do, and we still find this kind of stuff. In the church. Yeah. It's, it's wild. So, 19. Then answered Job and said, How long will you vex my soul and break me in pieces with words? These ten times have ye reproached me. Ye have, he says, Ye are not ashamed that ye make yourselves strange to me. So Job's been sitting back keeping score. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, that's one. <laughs> oh, that's two. <laughs> well, he's sitting down in the dust, you know, scraping away at his boils, no doubt, every now and again, leaning over, like you said, and just drawing a tick mark. Okay, I'll remember this. It's like presidential debates. Mm -hmm. I, I, we, we've seen them where they're standing up at their podium. I guess they all get a sheet of paper and a Sharpie or whatever. Yeah, you see them right <laughs> And so one of them's just, <laughs> and he's over there, yep, mm -hmm, I'm going to yeah. get back. I'm, I'm getting ready to answer back, you know. Um, but, you know, we, 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 we say, you know, sticks and stones, break my bones, words never hurt me, blah, blah, blah. They do hurt. Words do hurt. They really do. Especially, like Job is saying, you guys should be ashamed of the way you're talking to me. Mm -hmm. and, and it reminds me, I wrote down a reference here in Proverbs 18, 19. Um, when, when Job is sitting here saying what he's saying. Proverbs 18, 19 says, A brother offended is harder to be won than a strong city, and their contentions are like the bars of a castle. Mm -hmm. we, we, we you know, I've heard people call it church hurt. When someone hurts you that you should be able to trust, that's, that's a hard pill to swallow. When, when the world hurts you, or, or you expect it. You, you don't like it, it still hurts. But, but Job's like, you guys, are you not ashamed of what you're, you're beating me down with words. <clears throat> and you're treating me, he, he says, hmm. um, let's see, where, are you not ashamed that you make yourselves strange to me? Right. You, I don't you, even know you're, you. You're creating a, a breach. Right. In our relationship, you know, there's a divide happening, and you're not, you don't even act like that's a problem. Yeah, a couple of things that I hear, and that is, is it's as if they're speaking to him like they don't know him. Yeah. Because your friends come to you, and you don't have any guard up. You, know, Sh and you he's, shouldn't. He's right. basically getting pounded with no, like, like you're saying, out in the world. You'd expect someone in the world to say something about right. you, but you know, because they don't know you, so they're they're operating off of off of preconceived you know notions. But they, these guys 
supposedly mm-hmm. knew Job. So Job's guard is down, and they're hitting him with his guard down. It's like, it's like just standing there and getting hit in the box. That's a good point, because you are on guard out mm-hmm. there, mm-hmm. so you kind of are bracing for impact. Mm-hmm. But in this scenario, you, you shouldn't be. You yeah, know, so you get, you get caught completely. Mm-hmm. I'm very visual in my imagination, right? So I read stuff like this, and I start watching it like a TV show. And I, I just pictured Job sitting there. And he's all alone. Mm -hmm. He's lost everything. And then his friends show up. And they don't say anything. That had to be some relief. Exactly what I'm saying. They they sit down and he's probably, I'm not alone in this. And then they start beating him up. And then he wishes he was. Yeah, and then they double team him and triple team him. And then they don't stop. Now they're doing it again. And the the blows are getting harder. Harder and harder. He has to say, you know what? I was better off (laughs) before you guys ever showed up. You guys are not friends. You are, like you said, strange. Yeah. You're strangers yeah. to me because a friend wouldn't do this. Yep. Yeah, this is like the fourth time so far that he's kind of made a similar type, you know, miserable, com- I think you mentioned miserable com- comforters, or yeah. maybe you said it. So there's been like three or four different times where he said, I thought you guys were friends. <laughs> you know, I can remember one time here at the porch, somebody made a comment to me one, one day when we were having service. And it just rubbed me the wrong way, and it, it hurt my feelings. Sorry. No, it wasn't you. <laughs> Did you say feelings? <laughs> yeah, it hit feelings. I, get, I got those. <laughs> um, and a couple of days went by, and, I, and one day Cindy was like, what, what's, what's wrong with you? And so I finally just kind of fessed up and said, well, so-and-so said such and such and such. And she says, you know him. And it just to- totally caught me off guard when she, that was her response. She's like, Gordon, you know him. I'm like, what do you mean? She said, you know he didn't mean anything by that because you know him. Mm -hmm. Because you know him, you know that his intention for that wasn't. So here's what crazy thing. What ended up happening, I ended up going to him and saying, I owe you an apology. And he was like, what are you talking about? You know, he didn't know what was going on. I said, well, you said such and such, and I took it the wrong way. And, you know, he obviously said, I I didn't mean anything. I said, I know you didn't. Mm -hmm. But this is kind of where Job's at. He, he's. He's expecting because I know you guys, and because you know more to you because you made that, that remark, you know, they know him. Mm-hmm. Because they know him, they shouldn't be treating him like they're talking to someone out there, mm-hmm. you know. But, but they're getting a, a, a dose of reality, or say Job's getting a dose of reality about his friends. Yeah. You know, so wow. it's, it's <clears throat> now he knows his <laughs> friends are. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Right. In verse 4 he says, And be it indeed that I have erred, mine error remaineth with myself. He's like, guys, even if you're right, it ain't none of your business. Right. <laughs> What's it to you? <laughs> What's it to you? <laughs> this is my problem. Why, why, why are you guys worried about it? Mm-hmm. Even if I am the man you're calling me, and even if this is happening because of that, so what? You but they, they, it ain't so what no, for them. No, it's not so what for them. <laughs> if indeed ye will magnify yourselves against me and plead against me my reproach, know now that God hath overthrown me and hath compassed me with his net. Behold, I cry out of wrong, but I am not heard. I cry aloud, but there is no judgment. He hath fenced up my way, that I cannot pass, and he hath set darkness in my paths. I mean, he very descriptive mm-hmm. yeah. in what he's feeling. Mm-hmm. He feels like, he says, God has put up a roadblock. I, I can't go forward. Yeah. My life just stopped right here, and then he turned the lights out on me, and I'm, I'm in the dark. He's like, I'm crying out, but I don't get an answer. I don't understand what's going on. I know it's not what you guys are saying. But at the same time, I can't tell you why it is other than God's doing this to me. Um, and I've, I've thought about this. There's been a lot of times in my life I've felt in the dark. Oh, yeah. And that's, that's difficult because there's that whole control thing. Mm-hmm. When you can put all of it in a pretty little equation and you know you're going to get this answer. Yep, that's going to come and out. And you put it all in and it doesn't work out. The problem doesn't work out. That's, that's where, if that's your theology... Mm-hmm. Yeah, and, and, and I've experienced things in my life where I thought my, I, 
I thought I had my theology figured out and then life smacks you between the eyes and then you're like, oh, wait a minute, maybe that's not exactly how it works. Yeah, I see him saying in verse 5, if indeed you, you'll magnify yourselves against me and plead against me my reproach, know that God has overthrown me, has compassed me with his net. It's kind of like, you guys, God, I hear what you're saying, but it's worse for me with God. So what you're telling me almost is kind of like, it's nothing compared to yeah. feeling like God has left me. Yeah. You know, so almost like, just don't waste your breath. <laughs> you know, you're, you're not hurting me any more than I'm hurt. Yeah. <clears throat> he hath stripped me of my glory and taken the crown from my head. What? That's just... That's heavy. It is because Job was this great guy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He had it going on. <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean, he was, he was the poster child. And God just... Or allowed Satan to just take it away. You know and what now that's called nothing. in financial terms? A market correction. <laughs> 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 Job's yeah. thinking his value is up here. God's like, well, let me just kind of take Job's value off of himself. It's shaking the nonsense. It is. You know? It is shaking the nonsense because <clears throat> all of this stuff, if, if this stuff remained in his life, his theology would have never changed. Because all of this stuff theology. is proof that his theology is correct. Hmm. To his knowledge, his life didn't change, mm -hmm. but everything went away. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so now he doesn't have those reinforcements that were all over him saying, man, I serve God and he's blessed me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I serve God and he's blessed me. And now I serve God, where are the blessings? Right. It goes from being life of the party, throwing the big celebrations and the feasts, to I've got nothing left but a pity party. Because I've got nothing. Right. And so on a micro scale, <laughs> nothing like what Job's experiencing, it's like when we feel God's close. Mm -hmm. You know, you have, you have, you know, several months of just, you know, you come into worship and you just sense his presence is just right there. And, and then 2020 hits. <laughs> <laughs> but, but then you, 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 you just wake up one day and it just seems like he's a billion trillion miles away. Mm -hmm. And he's left you on a deserted planet. That's when, that's when your theology is tested. Mm -hmm. That's where I will never leave you nor forsake you really comes into play. Do I believe that? It's easy to believe that when I feel God's presence right there. Mm -hmm. But when I don't feel him anymore, is he still there? His word declares he is. You know, and In so, the world you'll find much tribulation. Be of good cheer for I have overcome the world. And so he is. He sh I love that phrase. He's shaking <clears throat> the nonsense. Yeah, he's emptying life. Job of Job. This, that one line right there just says it about the crown in verse in 9. Verse he nine, stripped yeah. me of my glory and taken the crown of my glory. He saw in him his life, and it was a glorious life. Mm -hmm. And then this crown, he has, has his position <laughs> in life. He's been defamed and dethroned. <laughs> But it's like Isaiah 6, where Isaiah says, In the year that King Uzziah died, mm. I saw the Lord high and lifted up. There are times where, and it's happened to me, God has to move something out of your life for you to really see him yeah. in the way that you need to see him. Otherwise, that thing or that person eclipses that. And, and that's, what, that's what God's doing. He's going to get there. So yeah, yeah. But, but first it was his glory and his crown. Now it's his circumstances without those. Right. Yeah. So he goes from one extreme to the other. Yeah. And God's trying to pull him back to the middle. <laughs> <laughs> Verse 10, he says, he hath destroyed me on every side and I am gone. And I immediately thought of what John says. He must increase. Yeah. I must decrease. Job thinks this is awful. To say, I'm gone. I am no more. But that's good. That's, yes, that's a good that thing. is a good thing. Get you know? me out of the way. So when people say, I, I, I'm at the end of myself. Good. You're, you're in a good you're place. You're in the beginning of where no, you I'm need not. to be. This is awful. <laughs> nope. You're in a good place. He says, and mine hope hath he removed like a tree. But his hope was in the wrong places. That's right. His hope. Yes. Not his hope in the Lord. Right. He hath also kindled his wrath against me 
and he counteth me unto him as one of his enemies. His troops come together and raise up their way against me and encamp round about my tabernacle. He's describing a, a sieged, mm -hmm. besieged city. He's like, God has just surrounded me and he has taken And there's nowhere to go. No. No escape. There, there's no escape. It's only part right. Satan's the one that surrounded him. But, right. Absolutely. But, but there's a purpose. Verse 13, he says, He hath put my brethren far from me, and mine acquaintance are verily estranged from me. My kinfolk have failed, and my familiar friends have forgotten me. <laughs> they that dwell in mine house, and my maids count me for a stranger. I am an alien in their sight. I called my servant, and he gave me no answer. I entreated him with my mouth. My breath is strange to my wife. Though I entreated for the children's sake of mine own body. Yea, young children despise me. I arose and they spake against me. All my inward friends abhorred me. Abhorred me. <clears throat> and they whom I love have turned against me. It was like you said. He's looking around. And anybody that he could have placed trust or hope or relied on in this moment of his life. They don't want anything to do with them. They're nowhere to be found. And he's looking at it as a bad thing, but he's right where he needs to be. But, you know, it, it's, it, 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 these people probably looked at Job as, as a model. Yeah. Yeah. These people probably, yeah, everybody looked at Job and said, well, they told him that, you know, all these young chapter people, two or yeah, three. all these young mm -hmm. people are probably thinking, man, if I keep serving God and doing the right thing, one day I'm going to be like Job. Mm -hmm. And now they're saying, I don't want to be like Job. I, I don't want, <laughs> I don't want nothing Please to do God. with, and I just don't, I think everyone around Job is struggling in their faith. Mm -hmm. They don't know, and we still do, right? I mean, what do you do with suffering? Right. I, I, how do you explain it? Why, you know, the, why do bad things happen to good <laughs> people? You know, we still wrestle with this whole thing, you know. Um, yeah. You know, why didn't God <clears throat> heal Granny, and why didn't? Why did Pastor so and so get cancer? You know, we 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 struggle with that, and I think a lot of people look at you know, godly granny or pastor so-and-so and think, well, if this can happen to him or her, I'm vulnerable. I'm not safe. There's no safe place for me based on what they believe. Right, and that's partly true because you can't trust in those things. Absolutely. You, they're, they're not promised. But, but when that reality hits, it is terrifying unless yeah. God is there. Unless God is there. That's, that's the missing piece. To fill that vacuum, well, to fill that void. And you trust in him and you realize, I don't even have to have any of this mm -hmm. uh, yeah, as long you, as I have him. You look at situations like this, I mean, and, and there's a couple of things that are popping into my head as, as we're talking, is that the majority of the time that we live, unless we have something chronic or unless we're in that, you know, and... God has us all in different places. Mm -hmm. It's peaceful in, in this sense. We're not experiencing these bad things. Right. So in the few times that we do, it's, it's Lord, you know, when, <laughs> what you say, why have you forgotten me forever? You <laughs> yeah. know? But I look at the other thing, I, I look at this and I see Christ. My God, my God, why have, why have forsaken? you forsaken me? You Surrounded know, by Roman soldiers right. and what he had stripped of his, yeah, all of these things. I, I see a type of Christ in this. In this. Which, which, that's a good point because we look at Job and go, oh my, that's as worst as it can get. Actually, no. 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 In this sense, Job is just a type mm -hmm. of the worst mm -hmm. it can get because on the cross, that's yeah. the worst it can get. Yes. Which is really cool because now instead of us, us on this side of, of this side of Job and the cross, we don't have to do what all of these people who have forsaken Job. I, I don't, I don't know what to do with Job. So I'm, I'm just going to avoid him. He, I know he's calling me, but I'm not going in that room because, I, just looking at him, just, uh, mm -hmm. I can now look at the cross, and realize there's a solution. Yeah, that's great. To that's where good. Job is. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I don't have to fear the Job scenario because I have the Jesus scenario. Yeah, and Jesus, 
his sacrifice was restorative for us. It was it restored us, so that we don't have to fear, regardless of what the circumstance is. You know, Paul and Silas they're chained to a Roman guard, they're in a jail, yeah. and they're singing praises. Mm-hmm. That is the peace that passes all understanding. And and what and what what the cross does? It eliminates this entire debate. Mm-hmm. Because my righteousness is in him. Therefore, he remains righteous. Right. Therefore, my righteousness is secure. Yeah. So I don't have to spend my life when bad things happen wondering, okay, what went wrong in the equation? Mm-hmm. It has nothing to do. The equation yeah, yeah, yeah. is solid. Yeah. That's paid in full. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's done. Then it's just a matter of not why, but what. Mm-hmm. What is God trying to do? Right with this in my life or in the, the life of someone else. Learning and getting closer and right. walking with him. And, yeah. I was talking with you about this earlier. This is pretty much a scenario I was dealing with today in ministering to a family who mm-hmm. uh, just lost the, uh, the mother of the family to COVID uh, this morning. And in ministering to them, I'm, I'm hearing this over and over and over again. Why her? Why would God do this? Uh, why not me, you know, all this. What is the reason? Why did he let her suffer for a month? Right, over and over and over again. Just why, why, why? Give me the answer. There's, and I had to keep reassuring. There's no answer that you're going to find. <coughs> Just stop looking at that. Look at this. She's with Jesus now, yeah, right? I mean... So there's celebration in that. Let's, let's take your eyes off the situation and look at the Savior because mm-hmm. she's with him now. Yeah. And you can go round and round. Well, it is a round and round. And it really is, because you've got nowhere to go. That's right. <laughs> You're just going to go round and round like a dog chasing its tail yeah. until you realize that what I'm chasing is not to be found here not unless either. I look to the cross. And that's, that's where I was when I got saved. It was, it was like I've tried everything and I've wrecked everything. <laughs> you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And it was like, the Lord's like, well, give me a try. And I'm like, all right, I'm coming after you. Yeah. I'm going to wreck you too. <laughs> I was like, come on. Yeah, I, I, can, I can take it. <laughs> I'll be all right. Verse 20 says, my bones cleave to my skin and to my flesh, and I am escaped with the skin of my teeth. Ooh, barely making it. So there's, there's the origin of that saying. Yep. You know, we talk about That's that funny. small margin of it, you know, <laughs> by small margin, it's by the skin of my teeth. <laughs> and then he cries out in verse 21, have pity upon me, have pity upon me, O ye my friends, for the hand of God hath touched me. Mm. Man, and in this... And they, hear, they don't hear this. Right. It's, it's, we know that it's just going to keep going. He's like, guys, have some pity on me. Wow. And then he says this. I love this. Oh, that my words were now written. Oh, that they were printed in a book. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't know. Did we skip verse 22? Yeah, we skipped 22. Oh, sorry. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, he says. so he says, why do you persecute me as God and are not satisfied with my flesh. Oh, that my words were now written. Oh, that they were printed in a book, that they were graven with an iron pen and led in the rock forever. He didn't even know. He got his wish. We're reading it. Yeah. That's pretty strong. Yeah. Because, yeah, it is written in a book, and it is read forever. The book. The book. (laughs) Yeah. Which... Reminds me of when Jesus says about, I think it's about Mary breaking the alabaster flask. He yeah. says that this is... This will be remembered, remembered. As, from now as far as the gospel is preached. Gosh, this, will be, this will be remembered as and a memorial is. for her. And yeah. it is. Mm-hmm. Sure is. <laughs> sure is. Which, which reminds us again, we've talked about this in the past... Everything that we're experiencing is bigger than we realize, yes. and it's eternal. And, and what Job, Job, Job is, he's crying out for something lasting because everything that he found comfort in and solace in is diminished. It's, 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 and he's like, I need something lasting. If my words could just be, you know, be remembered, and here's why. 
This, well, this is, is where why, it gets good. Yeah, this is why he <laughs> wants his words to be remembered because he's, he's shaken, but he still has his faith. He says, for I know that my Redeemer liveth and that he shall stand at the latter day upon the earth. <laughs> this is long before Paul ever had any kind of revelation before I know my Redeemer lives and I know he is going to stand on this earth in the latter days. This is where we see that shift where oh, the hope is not he, in yeah, him, right? Yeah. But it, the hope is in him. And then he says, and though after my skin yes. worms destroy this body yet in my flesh shall I see God whom I shall see for myself, and mine eyes shall behold, and not another, though my reins be consumed within me. Mm -hmm. If I die, I die. I've got hope. And we've seen this before. We've, mm -hmm. seen, we've seen Job being just overwhelmed with the, the temporal, the present. You know, and the sorrows and all the feelings that come with that and the emotion just almost drowned him you know, and he, he, he swims up and he takes this, another gasp of eternal air. I like that. And it's taking him further into eternity. Yeah. He, he has these moments. And he's, he's breaking into this place where his life probably wasn't lived mm -hmm. before now. Yeah. You know what I mean? He, yeah. he, he, he loved God. He feared God. We, we know that. God himself said so. But his relationship with the Lord... W was kind of in the here and now based on surface, cause and effect. Surface, it yes. wasn't deep. Mm -hmm. But now that the nonsense well, is being shaken deep. away. <laughs> he's being sharpened. He, he's, he's being forced in this desperate place to lay hold on eternal life, as Paul tells Timothy. Yeah. And so, and you know, I, I, I can look back over the bad times in my life and, and I can see how God used those times mm -hmm. for this, to deepen my faith, to, to shift my comfort, you know, mm -hmm. to, to the Lord. To, to make us loose our grasp on the worldly things and, and grab more onto him. Yeah. Yeah, because Job is running out of things to cling to. Mm -hmm. He doesn't have, he's, everybody that's supposed to love and be with him is gone. They don't have anything to do with him. He's lost his health. He's lost his wealth. He, he's struggling with everything that he thought was figured out, and now the equation's not working. Yep. God's removing all the idols. Yeah. yeah. You're right. And each time he's placed in the fire, more and more. Yeah. It's not supposed it to be to that it can be taken away. That taken precious away. metal yes. starts to shine, and <laughs> the dross or the impurities are burned away. So good. And knowing that my redeemer lives and that he shall stand at the latter day upon the earth is such a is prophetic it's a oh prophecy. yeah oh yes, yes it is his, and then that latter day i looked that up that means the hindmost or that furthest yeah. that latest day again another the last prophecy. day <laughs> We're in the last days yeah because and at this point job's grasping onto a truth that we know in the scripture even though everything, you know, you read Habakkuk, Habakkuk gets to that place at the mm -hmm. end. He says, though there's no fig tree on the vine, there's mm -hmm. no crop, there's no, I'm still going to trust the Lord. So he's saying, this may never be corrected in my life until yeah. the very end. But I'm convinced mm -hmm. somehow, some way, God, who I know to be just. My Redeemer. My Redeemer. Another prophetic. He's, he redeems. Mike, yeah, yeah. He's gonna make this right. Yeah. Because that language. That's, yeah. <laughs> that's the first time you 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 see that. I mean, chronologically. Mm -hmm. And that's pretty early. But the early, well, I think Job is 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 thought to be the, uh, the book before Genesis was actually written. But in the beginning, mm -hmm. the prophecy is, you know, that the seed of the woman. Yeah. His heel will be bruised by the serpent, but, the, but he'll crush the serpent's head. And then you, you put that up with my Redeemer. He's going to stand on the earth in the latter days. And well, yeah, you, so Job is, Job is at this place now where he's forced to cry out to the only one that right. can help him. That is right. And the beautiful thing about that is 
He can sense him. He doesn't. Yeah. See, but like we like we I've said, I've heard of you. We're going to get there. He says, yeah. "I've heard of you before." God's just there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The so where his friends time. are are concentrating on what they can see and right. putting their faith in that. Yeah. The friend that sticks closer than a brother. He's right there. Right there. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so after this, after Job says this, verse twenty, he says, "But ye should say, why persecute we him, seeing that the root of the matter is found in me." Be ye afraid of the sword, for wrath bringeth the punishments of the sword, that ye may know there is a judgment. Job's like, you know what, guys? <laughs> There's coming a final judgment. Yep. You guys need to be worried about that mm -hmm. instead Another of worried prophetic. about me right yep. now. And I Here's forget, the mirror. You guys should look in it. Yeah. yeah. And I think, it's, I think it's in Romans 14. might be in Corinthians. It's one of those where Paul is talking about judging our brother. And he says, know you not that we shall all stand yeah. before the judgment seat of Christ. Right. So he, 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 he tempers, we'll judge, we'll he judge tempers judges. that judgment mm. for my brother with remembering, oh, wait a minute, I, I'm going to be judged too. I, I might want to you know, keep that in perspective. Right. Right. So again, I'm very wow. visual. I can picture these guys who don't understand Job at all and only what they're wanting to say is, it can be the truth. Now he's talking about my Redeemer. Can you just imagine the look on their faces now? They really don't understand what Job's we'll, about. We'll find that out. In the next <laughs> we're going to get yeah. there. Yeah. Wow. Good stuff. It's, it's, and the other, the, it's called the juxtaposition or the side-by-side -side of his one friend that's, that's just talking all this poetry, you know, this nonsense, and then Job's talking the real thing. Mm-hmm the actual God. It's like when the Lord says to Peter, flesh and blood has not revealed this to you. You know, it's, it's God that has given, put these words and these utterances in Job's mouth. Right. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And they, they think they have God all figured out. They got God in a box. Yeah. They've, 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 they've solved the equation and Job is starting to catch glimpses yeah. of something they know nothing of. Right. And they can't know anything of it because of their equations. What a great transition. You know, and he, he's at a place now where it doesn't add up. And so he's crying out to someone that he knows knows more than the equation. Well, and, and the, again, and this is the last thing I'll say. It doesn't add up, so I, I need somebody about. smarter than me out there. That's, that's really good because he knows there's something beyond. So here's the deal. The... That theology, it's not God in a box, it's a God in a box. Hmm. They have a God in a box. They're God. And it's failing. He's being pushed outside of the box. Which is the, <laughs> the God. best <laughs> thing that could possibly happen to him. Yep. yep. That's it. And it happens to us too. Yep. We need to embrace it. So when you're in the dark and you can't figure it out, there's a friend that sticks closer than a brother, and he's trying to get you to see him instead of everything else. Mm -hmm. Catch you guys next time. God bless.